your life. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, the <clears throat> meeting of the Parks and Community Service for January will please come to order. And I believe our secretary will lead us um, with information for our roll call and other information. Yes, thank you. The procedures adopted for this meeting meet or exceed standards set forth in Governor Gavin Newsom's order N-29-20, which allows public meetings like this one to be held by teleconference to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. At this time, it would be appropriate to conduct roll call and afterwards to confirm certain matters for the record. Commissioner Dorlick. Present. Commissioner Ken Keniston Lee. Here. Commissioner Kensington. Birnbaum. Present. Commissioner Roberts. Present. Student Commissioner Ramesh. Present. Vice Chair Osland. Present. Chair Lopez Lucy. Present. Thank you. And I would like now to verify that all members of the committee can hear me well. All members of the committee have been able to hear all previous speakers, including the roll call. And each committee member believes based on facial or voice recognition or otherwise that all persons representing themselves to be a committee member are in fact committee members. If all three statements are true, true please indicate by raising your hand. Thank you. And finally, as a reminder, any votes taken during this meeting must be taken by roll call. Thank you. Thank you. We will now go to our Pledge of Allegiance and I believe Christy, you will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Absolutely. And you know what they did at the city council meeting? They had everybody mute and just one person said it. I don't know if that's something we wanna do or if we just wanna all chime in. I think she only does it as her as our secretary. She Got it, okay. Allegiance. Ready. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Special items and announcements. Do we have any special uh, announcements before we go to our temporary employees? Um, yes, we can. We can do those now. We have a few announcements. So we have the, um, just a reminder that the Crow Canyon Garden recommendation that you made at the last meeting is tentatively scheduled for the city council agenda on 126. I will let you all know for sure once that agenda is finalized, but I do recommend that you plan to tune in as I will be bringing your recommendation forward. I wanted to also let you know that staff is currently uh, working on a printed summer activity guide. We're really excited. We you know, had stopped the activity guide for a couple of quarters here because of COVID and the uncertainty, but we're feeling a little more certain. Um, so we're gonna be doing a summer guide and including some late spring programs that we have high hopes of making run. The programming that staff is doing is all based on a survey they put out to the community to find out everyone's comfort levels and what kind of programs people were interested in this summer. And we got great feedback. We know people want more outside things. We're going to be keeping the cohorts to 14. And as soon as the health order changes, we'll be able to increase those programs. And then finally, last thing I just wanted a quick reminder on for all of you is that we've set up a policy committee meeting to review the draft fee reso from the Parks and Community Services Department on January 27th at five. I believe uh, that's the date we're aiming for. And then we've set up a program committee meeting to talk about our tennis programs and policies um, on Thursday, January 28th. So Christy will reach out again just to make sure we've got that all firmed up, but just so you have that all on your calendars. A question, did you send that out to all of us? The policy and the program? No, only the okay. people that are only on those committees. On okay. All right, that is it. Okay, we will go then 4.1 to Temporary Employee of the Month, um, presented by Kevin Boggs. Kevin. Thank you, commissioners. I'm proud to be here tonight to honor Jonathan Latchelet as the Parks and Community Services Department's Employee of the Month for November 2020. 
Jonathan started out as a participant in the summer camps at the pool, but as he, uh, as soon as he turned 15 and he was able to take a lifeguard training course, he took the opportunity and was shortly after hired in May of 2018. Currently, Jonathan is a senior lifeguard for the aquatics division, which involves leading shifts, enforcing COVID protocols, making sure the pools stay open, uh, providing customer service, and ensuring the overall safety of patrons in the aquatic centers. Jonathan is a reliable staff member, and he consistently goes above and beyond what's asked of him. He's typically down on the pool deck, making sure that the staff and the patrons are all taken care of and that the pools remain safe. Jonathan was promoted uh, to a senior lifeguard position just before COVID hit. Uh, but despite all the challenges, Jonathan's ability to lead and help others has still continued to shine through. As a lifeguard instructor, Jonathan takes the time to provide positive reinforcement and corrective feedback to the staff during trainings. He's always working to make sure that the city of Santa Rosa's lifeguards are even better. Jonathan is always willing to help out his peers and cover shifts even come in on short notice when another staff member is sick. Currently, Jonathan's a senior at Cal High, and we're excited that Jonathan continues to work at the pools the remainder of the school year, and also as he starts his college journey at DVC. So the Parks and Community Services uh, Department would like to take this opportunity to thank Jonathan for his dedicated contributions to the department and to the city of San Ramon. Good job, Jonathan. Well, I wanna thank you, Jonathan, for being such a great employee is, and um, that you're a really good lifeguard. And so um, your job is important to all of us for keeping swimmers safe. And um, it sounds like that you um, really enjoy your job and that's really great when you enjoy your job, you can do a much better job. And that it's good for San Ramon that you're gonna continue working with us. So we're really pleased about that. And we just wish you the best of luck because as you enter into uh, college, we wanna wish you the best, but we are glad that you're gonna still be with us. So congratulations and thank you for your dedicated service. And if you would like to say something, we'd, you'd be, we'd be pleased if you would like to say something. All right, well, I'd like to start off with thanking my, uh, my supervisors, specifically Kevin for being there for like all of my training. So it started off with me as a as training for becoming a lifeguard itself kevin was present for that first training and was present throughout that entire uh, time got to know him a uh, great great uh, experience being able to at, le at least know one of my supervisors when i went in and then throughout the entire time i've been there he's been there uh he's been there every time if i need a question asked go to kevin kevin will tell you anytime uh, i'd also like to thank hub with uh andrew hubbard for being also a great supervisor he's always always been nice to everyone always uh, always making sure things get done if you have a question also you can go to hub uh, i'd also like to thank the uh the senior staff team at uh, the aquatics always being there always making sure that everything's running smoothly if i need a shift covered or uh, something's going wrong we can always ask each other make sure stuff is actually running well anytime uh and then i'd like to thank the aquatics department as a whole just for the opportunity to be able to work with them to be able to be with the lifeguards to be able to be with the other senior staff and to be able to have this job thank you very much does anyone else let want to say anything at this time well i i just think it's great kevin to get that kind of response from a member of your team you should feel proud of that because that's that's big. So Jonathan, we love all the things that you did. I have two Cal High graduates, so good job. But Kevin, you should be proud of that. Thank you. Next on our agenda is the <clears throat> temporary employee of the month for December is Natalie. And uh, that will be presented by Adam Chow, our recreation supervisor. Adam. Well, good evening. Thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I am honored to be able to present the December Employee of the Month to Natalie Kwong. So Natalie is here with us this evening. Uh, Natalie has been a cashier with us uh, working at the pools, which is a popular theme so far this evening. Uh, she was hired as a cashier to work at the San Ramon Olympic Pool and the Doherty Valley Aquatic Center uh, to be able to help take in money during lap swim, during uh, recreation swim, 
and do customer service with us. Uh, what the first thing that we, we noticed about Natalie is she has a terrific smile and she has an infectious energy about her that makes the customers excited about being at this facility, excited about going swimming uh, and excited about coming back as well. She's always been um, that positive glow um, of staff that we've been wanting uh, and we're happy to be able to bring her on uh, to be able to do that. Uh, she's been an exceptional employee who has been flexible. She's learned quickly and always produces positive results helping us out. Um, at those pools and helping out our customers as well. Uh, she greets our swimmers with a smile. Um, and that is really one of the biggest things for, for us is that we want to really make sure we greet everybody as they come into our facilities. And she's there to be able to provide that positive, um, welcoming feel um, anytime anybody comes into our facilities. She even had a friendly competition with one of her coworkers uh, at the pool to be able to greet as many people as possible and see how many people would be able to respond to them positively. Um, that, that kind of fun and that kind of excitement, you know, makes the, the workplace exciting, um, a great place to be. Uh, and Natalie has been a great team member uh, that we've added onto our team. And we're so pr proud of her. Uh, we're happy that she's continued to work with us year round. Uh, she has taken on some of our early morning shifts at the pool, um, which is in the six o'clock hour at times, which is a little bit early for me, but so happy that Natalie uh, was able to do that before she started school at Cal High. Uh, and then continues to be able to work in the, in the afternoons and evenings uh, at the Cal High Pool as well. And so we appreciate the jobs that she does. Um, she has been a tremendous asset for us, helping uh, anything from picking up shifts to uh, volunteering for shifts, uh, making sure that customers are, are enjoying themselves. So uh, we really appreciate her working with us. And so the Parks Community Services Department would like to thank Natalie uh, for her contributions to the Parks Community Services Department. So thank you. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Well, congratulations, Natalie. It sounds like that you just have a, a wonderful personality that you can greet guests and then meet with everybody and that smile. And that's a wonderful asset that you have. And, you know, you can carry that throughout your entire life. You'll make people happy. And that's great and that you're a great employee. So I think your enthusiasm does show through. And so I just want to congratulate you for being such a a wonderful employee and helping everyone to feel comfortable and welcome at our facilities. So thank you again. And if you would like to say something, please feel free to do so. Uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you. And uh, thanks to Adam and like all my other managers, Stacy as well and Kathy. Um, they've all been like super helpful and just like really great overall with like managing everyone. And I just want to say thanks to like all the staff as well. Um, they've been a pleasure to work with, like all front desk and even aquatic staff. Um, and then it honestly has been a pleasure to work for the city. And I continue to look, I always look forward to like all my shifts as well. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have anything, the comment you want to make? Thank you, Natalie. Continue being such a happy and go lucky person. It sounds great. We are going to, okay, 4-3, okay, I got my special announcements ahead of the game, but that's okay, I guess. So I, do we have any public comments or written communication at this time? We do not for number five. Just oh, okay, for number five, we do not have any comments. So I guess at this time, I won't read through all the information that we have to do that since we have no public comment. Um, then we're going to go to item number six, approval of minutes for the December 2020 meeting. So I need a motion for that. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the Parks and Community Services uh, regular meeting on December 9th. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank you. Are there any other discussion on them? Was that Heidi that seconded? Yeah. Yes, it was. No further discussion than the minutes of the December 9th, 2020 meeting will be approved as presented. And then we just need to take roll call, so that would take a moment. Okay. Um, Commissioner Gorland? Yes. Commissioner Keniston Lee? Aye. Commissioner Birnbaum? Aye. Commissioner Roberts? Aye. Vice Chair Oslin? Aye. Chair Lopez. Aye. Thank you. Minutes passed. Thank you.
it's so automatic that you approve minutes. It's on my mind. <laughs> Forget that we have to vote on each one. Uh, I don't believe we have any things on the consent calendar. Is that correct? That's correct. We do not. Okay, we will then then proceed to item number eight, which is the Art Advisory Committee annual report. And I believe that will be presented by Adam Chow. Good evening again. Well, um, it is that time of the year uh, that the Arts Advisory Committee gets to come to uh, the Parks Commission, be able to let you know uh, the fantastic things that they've been doing uh, in the year 2020, though uh, 2020 was a bit of a, uh, a uh, tr tr tumultuous year, I would have to say. Uh, we were able to do a lot of things uh, with the Arts Advisory Committee and we were able to get a lot of things accomplished. Um, and so uh, we are excited to be able to let you know what we have accomplished throughout the year, um, what we are looking forward to for the next year and some of the goals that we have been doing. Uh, and the presentation will be done by our Arts Advisory Committee Chair, Jenna McCoy. Hi everyone, thank you for having us tonight and Happy New Year. So I'm, um, do I have permission to share? Yes, you can proceed with you. The city clerk will give you permission. Okay. You could try it. It looks like it's... There you go. Okay. So let me minimize everybody else here. Okay. Um, again, thank you for having us um, to present today. And I know that some of my um, committee members are in the wings tonight. So um, we'll... We'll introduce them virtually later, but today is our annual report and we'll just talk about what the Arts and Advisory Committee has been doing. So the purpose of our committee is to provide ongoing input to the city of San Ramon on the provision and delivery of cultural art programs and services in San Ramon. To do so, one must recognize the intrinsic value of cultural arts to a community. The arts bring a sense of creativity, inspiration, and socialization to our citizens. They enrich our lives daily, from music to storytelling to theater, and also visual arts, seeing the arts on display in our galleries, public arts within the city limits. So we can look and listen to cultural art and enjoy a few moments of inspirational relief from the fast paced world in which we live. And I know for many right now, the arts have been a lifeline to normalcy and a way to escape um, the, pan the feeling of panic from the pandemic. So um, that's what this committee does. We provide counsel and recommendations and we do a lot of work in the meantime. I'm the chair, um, Dave Owens is our vice chair and we have several um, regular members. Um, thank you for, for appointing some new vital, much needed blood to our committee. Um, Ofer Dalal is one of them. Uh, Patrick Gutierrez has been on the board for a couple of years. Magli Lubudier. Partha Mitra, Nina Shastri, and Mohammed, and I can't say his last name, <laughs> Ranja, Bart, I don't know. Adam, you've been practicing. Ran, Ranj Bar Sadehi. There we go. So we also have our city council member, Scott Parkins, and one of your own, Will Dorlick, as our Parks and Community Services Commissioner Liaison. We also have one team council member, Diane Madhawk, who has attended all the um, committee meetings since she was uh, appointed to our committee. So what have we done this year? So we have, let me get to my notes here. So we have reviewed and recommended selection of artists for new public art installations at selected locations. And this um, picture that you're seeing is at the library. We are actually in progress on this particular um, new piece of public art. It's very exciting. And our entire committee is very happy to be working on this, on this particular program. 
We review current arts programs and classes within the city and make recommendations to staff for improvement. Obviously this year it's been a challenge and a lot of things have gone online. Um, one of our members does dance classes and she does online classes as well. So she's a teacher um, and does the online classes for our community as well. So last year we selected an artist who for the um, 2020 Art and Wind Festival. We, since we did not do that, we are going to use the same artist for next year and, or for this year, 2021. And we're looking forward to um, the art that he will create for our hopefully in-person Art and Wind Festival this summer. We also reviewed and selected artists for our exhibition in the Lindsay Dirks Brown Gallery, the Alcosta Senior Center, Community Center, the Doherty Station Community Center, the Santa Ramon Library and City Hall. Now, again, because of the pandemic, many of these gallery um, showings had to be postponed and we will uh, move them into the galleries as soon as we're able to open this year. We also have an uh, action to review public art proposals from private development and make recommendations for accepting them to the Planning Commission. Over the last year, the um, Arts Committee did not have any um, public art to review from private development. We also review and make recommendations to update the cultural growth grant program and to review the applications and recommend grant amounts to staff. Again, due to COVID-19, um, we were unable to uh, provide any grants because performance has been canceled due to the pandemic. We're again hoping that that will change in this next year. And we've been brainstorming ideas for other ways to have uh, other cultural, cultural things happening um, during this pandemic. So we also normally encourage arts advisory committee members to attend a minimum of four arts events per year in San Ramon and to provide feedback on those events. Um, and I sound like a broken record, but most of us haven't been able to do that due to um, the restrictions and canceling of many, many items this year. So what are we planning for next year or this current year? So we are excited about what's happening in San Ramon right now with the arts. Um, the public library art project is huge um, and we are midstream. Um, we have already looked at um, selecting, narrowing down our artists. And I think within the next two months, we should um, be putting something forward to you as far as an artist. And um, hopefully you'll agree with us and we'll get moving on that. This is a long-term project, about 18 months. And hopefully um, we'll have something beautiful. I'm sure we'll have something beautiful that the community will love. And all of us um, are very excited about being part of this process. We also have a goal to review the current arts programs and classes within the city and to make recommendations to staff for improvement. So typically we would select a new artist for a new original piece of artwork for the San Ramon Art and Wind Festival. And we will be using um, the artist we selected last year for this year's Art and Wind Festival. And we will, and already have, um, looked at reviewing art gallery proposals and exhibits for the city's art galleries. And again, those were limited due to moving um, exhibits from last year into this year. Review public art proposals from private developments and make recommendations for acceptance of the Planning Commission. So we're hoping that we will have additional public art proposals from developers. Um, some of that might depend on what's happening with Bishop Ranch, 
but at this point, I don't think we have anything in the in this uh, in the cycle yet. We also hope to be able to review growth grant cultural growth grant applications and recommend grant amounts to staff. Of course, this is assuming we can all get back into theaters and um, in-person performance. So again, we are encouraged to be ambassadors and attend a minimum of four arts events per year in San Ramon and provide feedback. As we've been discussing within the arts committee, we are hoping to be able to provide more opportunities that might not necessarily be in person and be able to present those um, online. And hopefully we'd be able to attend some of those too before we're able to get back to um, live in-person events. And this year we are going to review the five-year cultural arts plan. Um, again, it's from 2018 to 2022. We're coming up on the end of it this year. And we want to recommend and provide recommendations for pri our priorities for 2021 and what that might look like for the balance of this year. So again, we want to provide suggestions and feedback to the staff on arts opportunities during and recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic. As I indicated before, our Arts Advisory Committee is very dedicated to um, really looking at how we can better serve the community during this time um, and trying to find other ways to reach out since it's so hard for people to do things live and in person. Um, and so we'll, we'll also review and provide feedback on the opportunity to rebrand the Doherty Station Community Center to highlight its role in the arts and culture in San Ramon per the master plan goal of 4.3K. I think those pictures of those kids and all of these pictures were pre-pandemic, but they're, they're what we wanna get back to. And we hope that we will be able to do that in this coming year. So now I'd like to open it up to questions, comments, or ideas. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioners, do any of you have um, comments? I've raised my hand. Okay, okay. That's okay. um, <laughs> still up there and then I can't see my chat room oh. either. So um, yes, Commissioner uh, Kinston, Kinsington Lee, please. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. I've been practicing. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you, Jenna. You know how I know somebody knows their stuff and is invested in their program is when they can speak off script. So you followed the PowerPoint, but you elaborated, and I I always appreciate that. I you know we we've attended so many these meetings and Chair Carol Lopez Lucy, you can see when people just read it wrote right, yes. but you are enthusiastic about your function and it shows. So I appreciate that. So thank you for that. I had a couple of suggestions and a couple of questions. One is, I was curious if, um, and I'm, I'm wondering if our teen council representative to the advisory arts advisory committee is here and if they've been able to participate and give, and what's your perspective on um, their opportunity to give a youth voice to what you're doing. So that's one question. Okay, do you want me to answer as Yeah, and then I'll go to the other ones. I just have a okay. couple. So um, we really do try to include the youth and they're always, we have an alternate, a youth alternate. And I think both of them always attend our meetings. They don't always speak, um, okay. but I do try to give them the opportunity to um, jump in. Um, none of us on the committee are quiet. <laughs> we, none of us are fading flowers. We are all very, very okay with talking and having our voices heard. So um, I do think it's important to give the, the youth advisory committee members an opportunity to talk. So Good. I do try That's to great. do that and make Thank sure you. that their voices are heard. And with regard to your subcommittees, I especially like that your visual arts subcommittee um, refers to, to following trends. I like that you guys are looking forward. So I wanted to, you know, you're not just kind of doing the same thing. You guys are looking at trends. So I love that. I have one, one I'm going to plant a seed. 
Okay. Um, and, and Kathy, I know there's been some regional discussion about this, but I have long sort of gently mentioned um, that I might like to see um, some kind of artwork like crows in the community that sort of like the hearts on hearts. And so I know this is just, there's no need to address it. I'm just planning it in, on the, in, as a seed right now. And Kathy, maybe sometime um, you can um, give us an update on what's going on with that regional effort. Um, but I'd like to see, you know, crow sculptures that are individually painted like those hearts on hearts. It could be crows on crow or it could be crows in the community, but just planting the seed. And then um, the deeper question I have, and this is my last question is, um, in your purpose, the purpose of your committee. Um, and this sort of points toward our next agenda item. So we won't get into the agenda item, but I see that we are looking at ways to address social issues through the arts, right? Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if maybe for the next 12 months, when you guys come back with another annual report, you guys look at how are other cities positioning their purpose or their mission statements to reflect that role in the community of addressing social issues through the arts. So is it that they actually say we will advise on how to successfully utilize the arts to address social issues, to provoke, provoke thought, um, to promote reflection on social issues. So again, I don't know what that answer is. You guys might come back to us and I might say, you know, I'm not comfortable with that or we're not quite there yet, but I'd love for you guys as an advisory committee, look and see what other communities are doing and see where we need to be. Does that make sense? It does. And it, it brings me back to something we've, um, we've already put back to your commission, um, a new pop-up art installation that yeah. totally reflects that. Um, right. and, and I think that our committee is very well equipped for doing more work in the, not, it, not just social justice, but in diversity and inclusion. Um, our committee is very diverse itself. Um, the members are from all over the world and some grew up here, some didn't. And you know, we all have a very broad life experience that we bring. And it's something that we talk about when we're talking about art or how would this be, um, looked at from different yeah. viewpoints. So, and I know I we're going to address well. that in the next agenda item. My purpose in mentioning it is to see if there's a place it might live in the purpose or mission statement. You know what I mean? Cause I think you guys are moving in that direction, but I think that the annual report might be lagging behind in that regard. So just to take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you. That is it. Thank you, chair. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, um, commissioner Roberts. Thank you, Chair Lopez Lucy. Um, and thank you for a great presentation, Jenna. It was, it was fantastic. And, and, and actually thanks to the entire committee for all the, the hard work that's done to make it, uh, in making San Ramon a more fun and enjoyable place to live. Um, in fact, I, I, I really see this committee uh, as being responsible for holding the keys uh, to the soul of San Ramon. And I think it's absolutely critical that we continue providing an outlet for a creative voice, you know, whether that's audio or visual or performance driven. So again, um, I really thank uh, you guys for, for, for doing all the hard work and, and the tremendous effort that you put uh, into this, uh, making this committee work. Um, I have two pieces of feedback I'd like to share. Um, number one is I'd like to reiterate something I mentioned last year, uh, which is to consider hosting an arts summit again. I say this because the, the, the summit that was held 20 years ago uh, resulted in a variety of great ideas, uh, including the birth of this advisory committee itself. So, um, you know, uh, so, so essentially what I, you know, uh, the reason why I'm bringing this up is, is that, um, you know, I think that, that this committee can get sort of bogged down into its annual goals, its, its week to week, its month to month goals, um, I know you guys have a full plate, um, but I think that, uh, you know, doing, uh, an, you know, maybe like a, a, this, this summit, maybe once every five years would allow the community to sort of step back, take a deep breath and uh, think about its own creative vision uh, rather than constantly thinking about 
everyone else's creative vision within the city, right? So, uh, so it's just something to think about. Um, I think only great things could come from it. And uh, we, you know, obviously we're only talking about maybe once every five years. So um, the other thing I would bring up is regarding the San Ramon Community Arts Project, this installation project. You know, of course, I think we're, you know, we're working out some, some uh, logistical items uh, that, you know, that we, we uh, will be looking at again this evening. Uh, but the vision is fantastic. And I just hope to see more of these types of pop-up installations, not only visual, but music and, and theatrical pop-ups as well. And I think it's important for our community to have these types of projects and, and I hope to see more of them in the future. So uh, something to think about. But other than that, thank you so much uh, for being here tonight and, and uh, giving us this presentation. Thank you, I've uh, captured, captured that in my notes and I'm sure Adam has too. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Oslin. Thank you, Chair Lopez Lucy. And Gemma, it's nice to see you and thank you for your presentation. Um, arts uh, in our community is really near and dear to my heart. And when I walk around uh, the city of San Ramon and I see various uh, statues and, and uh, sculptures and visual, I think of the Arts Advisory Committee. So thank you for um, keeping this present um, as you know we are able to get it, get out and about in our uh, community. A question I had was about the five-year cultural arts plan. And I'm curious if that's available uh, uh, for viewing for the commissioners. I have not seen that before. And I was very interested when I was reviewing the um, your presentation that I would love to see that and kind of see what's what's in the queue, what you guys are, are looking at uh, for a five-year plan. Is that something that can be available to the commission? I'm actually going to defer to Adam here. Um, I'm not sure where you would find it, but I'm sure it's available. Yes, we, we absolutely can share that with the commissioners. It's available to the public. Um, it outlines the priorities of how we can be able to move forward with arts and ceremony. Um, it, it, will, it was part of, um, Let's see, it was updated by the Arts Advisory Committee in 2018, and we will start looking at that actually this year moving forward. And so Scott's uh, suggestion regarding the Art Summit, I did hear, we did hear you last year, Scott. And so <laughs> that is something we are looking at as we move through the five-year plan. We kind of will wrap up the five-year plan, and then we can be able to start looking at that for the future and see if that's uh, something we'll be able to put together as we move, obviously, into the next year. Great. Thank you. I would be interested in seeing that. And I think the only other um, question I have is I love the utility boxes and I'm just wondering if that is something that's also part of your plan for 2021. I don't know if that's on the agenda for 2021. Adam, can you, I think so, but I'm not positive. <laughs> we, we do have a couple of different projects in the works. Obviously we have the library um, public art project that we are in the, we're, we're towards the beginning of the process, but we are working full steam ahead to be able to just get that moving as quickly as possible. Um, we do have a couple other suggestions in regards to temporary public art projects um, that are some, some pop-ups um, and some other pieces right now. Utility boxes is not currently on the docket. However, that is always an option as well um, and something that we will take a look at. Great, thank you. That's all I have. Thanks again. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, Ms. Ramish, do you have some comment, please? Yeah, um, so I actually have about, I have one question and one comment, I'll ask them both together. So first I wanted to thank the entire Arts Advisory Committee for all your work. I know the arts have been hit especially hard um, because of COVID-19 and it's really great to see that you're able to be flexible and resilient. Um, so first, uh, the first comment I have to make is, I know um, you mentioned that the, um, that there isn't much engagement with the team liaisons. And um, I'm not sure about the Arts Advisory Committee in specific, but I know that for some other advisory committees, the liaisons have been uh, put into the attendees list. So I think because of that, um, I'm not sure if that's the same for the Arts Advisory. No, they're, they're within, um, they're live on screen. They can jump in um, just like any other uh, committee member. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. I just wanted to check in on that. And 
Um, the second sort of question I have is, um, I noticed that you mentioned that you wanted to rebrand the Doherty Station Community Center. And I was wondering whether um, the Arts Advisory Committee would be able to look into some sort of community art display. From the information that I gathered online, I know that we do feature an artist about once every two months, but is there any way that you could look into some sort of com community art wall, uh, particularly featuring youth artists from different high schools and elementary schools and um, yeah, just community artists? I, I think that's a great idea. And again, I'm, I'm taking notes on my other computer here. So um, yeah, I think that's a great idea when we get to um, talking about that. I, that's definitely something we can bring forward and get feedback on. I know that we've had um, community art done like on the, at the cultural world, the cultural day that we've had where people put um, stickies on where they were from and on this giant map and that's rolled up somewhere. So maybe we'd be able to even resurrect some other public art that um, might be sitting hidden somewhere right now. So I, I love your idea though, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you very much for, uh, Jenna, for your report. It covers a lot. I have been on the art advisory, you know, a liaison to the art advisory committee. So I know it's really fun to be on there and see all the avenues that we can pursue in art and especially um, the art, public art, you know, that's, that's gonna be fun that you're working on that new project. So I think you do a really a good job and you got have a lot of ideas. And I know it's been sad this year that we couldn't proceed with some of the things. I am also um, a member of the Dublin San Ramon Women's Club who has uh, in the past had the month of April to show art uh, at the um, Lindsay Dirk Museum. And that covers, we have an annual of, of uh, contest from kindergarten through high school. So to raise your comments there, we would welcome more people to enter that. We go through the schools and we have some guidelines, but um, in the past, uh, the last time we had 400 entries and um, it's really, it's sad that we do not have more entries from high school students and junior high. So if we're able to do that this coming year, maybe I can reach out to more that you can encourage them because it's all, it's their art. We don't want a teacher saying, you know, you all have to draw trees to enter this contest. We want it to be an individual. And so then after that, they're professionally judged and, and their awards, and then we display as many as we can at the Lindsay Dirk Museum. And then there is also a uh, reception for the winners and their parents and any of the teachers or anybody that wants to come. So I think that does cover some art that enhances all types of students. And, you know, we don't care what, I mean, they have to have some kind of guidelines. You can't have nudes that it would not be appropriate, but there's some, you know, normal guidelines but we can put more emphasis on that. That would be helpful. And we appreciate that we get to display them at the, at the uh, museum. So we appreciate that. But do we do put a lot of work into that? So that I do know that we can, we can even work closer with the Arts Advisory Committee if possible. Absolutely. I'm sure that you put out a call for help and um, you'll probably get multiple, you'll probably get more people wanting to help than you want. <laughs> Well, that's true. And that's where we've, we've also had some of uh, the members be uh, judges to help us with that area also. But so that's appreciated too. So the more the community can work together, the better it is, you know, to spread it. And art is a great way to do that. So thank you for your report and for all that the Arts Advisory Committee does. So, and thank you, Adam, for being a good leader for the arts. And so if we have, no one else has any comments, why? We just thank you very much for being here with us this evening. Thank you and a big shout out to staff because they really um, help us keep it together and focus. Um, those of us in the arts world tend to go off on tangents <laughs> and um, Adam really um, sometimes has his work cut out for him to keep us on track. So thank you to staff and thank you to all of you. I appreciate the, the opportunity to speak to you tonight.
Thank you again. So if we need a motion, I will uh, move that we accept the report and move it on to the city council with our recommendation to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, Madam <clears throat> Secretary, do you want to have roll call, please? You're, you're, you're muted, Christy. Sorry about that. And just to confirm, was it Will who made the mo first motion? Yes, he did. I think so, yeah. Commissioner Dorlick? Yes, I'll uh, second that. Commissioner Keniston Lee? Aye. Commissioner Birnbaum? Aye. Commissioner Roberts? Aye. Uh, Vice Chair Oslink? Aye. And Chair Lopez Lucy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to our next item on our agenda, which is 8.2, our San Ramon Social Justice Collective Community Public Art Project. And I believe this will be presented by Erica Valentine. And I see her coming on here. There she is, Erica. Yes, and actually I'm going to chime in here with just a couple things first because um, this is the same item you heard um, in December, so they're coming back. So I just wanted to preface by saying the Social Justice Collective has worked really, really, really hard over the last month to clarify the parts of their project and to address the concerns you raised at the December meeting. Despite the holidays and everything else, they were working hard at this. They are super passionate about this project and I believe that they are really committed to working with the city to make it really a great project for the whole community. You know, the project itself breaks into three primary components and that's kind of the project concept, which I think we're all clear on, the project location, which is proposed at the skate park and that interactive uh, community QR component. So just as a procedural point, you know, you can look at them collectively as the project as a whole, or you can address them separately if you wish. For example, if you like the project and the QR code, but weren't in favor of the location for a safety reason, you could approve the other two and make a suggestion to put the project on a different area, like a tennis court fence. Um, but, or you can just uh, look at it as collective one whole project that's really within your purview as a commission. Ultimately, the final decision on what artwork goes in the park is yours um, as the proposed part, the proposed artwork that, that they come up with will go both to the Arts Advisory Committee and the Commission for final approval before that artwork is fabricated. If you have major concerns about the QR code prompts, you could ask that the prompts be reviewed at the same time that the artwork comes back to the committee. That's another option for you. Um, it just really depends on, you, on your comfort levels. But tonight we are definitely looking for a recommendation as the collective has a really tight timeline. They would love to be able to complete this project in time to launch it on Juneteenth. And so um, at this point, we're kind of where we need an answer. Um, and so I, I'm really excited about the presentation that they've put together for you. And Erica has been working very closely with them. So let me hand it back off to Erica to kind of take it away. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so just to reiterate what Kathy said, um, we have Stephanie Yu and Nina Shastri here tonight. Um, they will be presenting um, as part of the whole um, a larger San Ramon Social Justice Collective. Um, so they have been working um, really diligently since the last meeting um, and they um, will have more information tonight um, to answer those questions um, and provide more clarification um, on some of the items such as um, their processes, the group structure, the QR codes, um, uh, their guidelines, their forms, um, and other items that you might have questions on. Um, so with that, I will turn it over to Stephanie and Nina. Give me one second as I share my screen here. Okay. Is everyone able to see that? Okay. Good evening, commissioners. Um, thank you for inviting us back here tonight to answer the questions you had for us um, last meeting. Um, as Kathy mentioned, we've been working tirelessly with our stakeholders, our legal representatives, equity coordinators, and leaders of the Black community to give a thoughtful response to you tonight. 
Um, we want to take a moment to thank the Council of PTAs for voting today to be a stakeholder in this project. Yay! <laughs> and we're excited to have you and the rest of our stakeholder organizations on board and look forward to getting the work started. So our collective came together um, to create this project out of a shared desire to contribute to the momentum for change for racial equity for our Black community members. We made refinements removing BIPOC language so as not to appropriate either the spirit of the Black Lives Matter movement nor the, th nor the theme breathing free together. And as you have mentioned so thoughtfully, Commissioner Roberts, art holds the keys to the city. And we have chosen the path of public art because at its core, Art is an expression of the soul. Public art is evocative and dy dynamic and the cities that engage in them often reap immeasurable benefits. So today we will be going over the fine, uh, following items, location, our operational team, our social media, our art submission process, our selection committee and process, our call for art, our public art display safety, our QR code, and our change in age requirements and a time for Q&A. So the proposed location continues to be the fence along the San Ramon Central Park Skate Park. The fence allows us to hang the banners in a location with a high volume of traffic, foot traffic, as well as giving our project the visibility that we're looking for to stimulate that community dialogue and also proximity to other city facilities. This is our operational team. Um, we organized our operational team into five operational units, project coordination, art selection coordination, social media coordination, project administration, and art submission coordination. Each committee is further comprised of youth facilitators, SRSJC collective members, and stakeholders. Um, as you can see, the youth facilitators have been highlighted in green. A breakdown of each team can be found in Appendix A of our project's PDF that you have received and reviewed. Um, I would like to turn it over at this time to our social media coordinator, Naina Shastri. Thank you, Stephanie, and a good evening, commissioners. Um, I am Naina Shastri. I have been a core member of uh, the SRSJC um, team from the beginning. I am an Indian classical dancer, performer, and educator here in the San Ramon Valley, and have been a member of the San Ramon Arts Commi Advisory Committee now for the past three years. Um, as you are well aware, all activities have moved to online platforms due to the pandemic. So we decided to take our community interactions online too. In keeping with the county guidelines, online discourse is the way for the foreseeable future. Our social media sites will be a safe, healing, understanding space for the community to participate. We will be using Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, accounts have already been created specifically for this project. So what I'm pretty much saying is that uh, without the artwork, there is no social media. We decided on these platforms as they help a diverse demography. Here are the members of our team. As you can see, our team is made up of adults and youth members of the community. We will be inviting more youth ambassadors to join and contribute once the physical artwork is up and running. As a team, we will discuss and decide posting topics, timelines, and schedules. Prior to final posting, they will be reviewed by project team uh, coordinators and require final approval by the social media team adults. The purpose of SRSJC's social media is to use it throughout the project for announcements such as deadlines, instructions, reminders, provide uh, forms and other project related information. We will introduce our various stakeholders um, and celebrate their support to this body of work uh, periodically. Uh, we will also include posts which celebrate uh, racial equity, for example, a uh, post about uh, February being Black uh, History Month. Once, of course, the artworks are selected by the selection committee and the artists whose work will be used um, in the art exhibit have been notified, we will announce and share those pieces on our social media site. We will also post all the other pieces which have passed the submission guidelines and for which artists have given permission to use. 
on our social media sites. And um, this really is sort of the heart of our um, project. And this is how we will celebrate all the artwork and participants. We are excited about this and look forward to showcasing a vibrant um, array of work by our community members, both young and old. And um, coming, and also, um, I wanted to mention that uh, prompts will not be live on social media until, uh, that is a QR prompts, will not be live on social media until a couple of hours prior to the actual physical inauguration of the artwork. That way we can ensure proper monitoring of activity immediately upon launch. Again, the adult members of our social media team will review all posts before they are posted. Although the youth members will draft posts, suggest topics to share, et cetera, the adult members of our team will still review them before they are posted. With regards to posts from the public, we have clear posting guidelines on our Facebook page. All posts will have to be approved by the admins. We will be putting in word filters so that posts and comments that are not aligned with our guidelines will be automatically prevented from being shared on our pages. Instagram and Twitter similarly have their own processes and we will use those tools if we need to remove a post or block someone from further engaging or breaking our posting rules. What I would like to say is we are all, most of us moms, parents, responsible community members actively involved with the city activities. We are cognizant of and sensitive to social justice issues. We have our own SRSJC guidelines, checks and balances that we not only expect from participating community members to adhere to, but that we constantly put ourselves through too. Offending parties will not be allowed to post comment or participate in any way through our social media sites. That was my presentation. I did want to go through a script so it was not rambling on uh, because we have a time schedule. And I now request um, Stephanie to go through the rest of the presentation. And thank you all for listening and thank uh, Stephanie, take it away. Yes, I echo Nana. Um, I will be staying on script tonight also to um, not to keep the time on check and to also honor the voices of everybody in our collective who have been working hard on this. Um, so this next slide is our art submission submission art submission process flow. As you have reviewed um, prior to this meeting, we outlined our detailed art submission process flow in addendum B. It includes the call for art information about the artist Q&A with the artist, um, the art coordinator, submission requirements, documentation and tracking, artist selection and compliance to guidelines. The art submission coordination team is responsible for receiving and routing incoming questions to the appropriate project member, intake and tra tracking of individual art submissions and working with artists to ensure proper completion of all submission guidelines. And this is our current art submission coordination team. Our art selection committee is comprised of members of SRSJC stakeholder organizations. The selection criteria have been developed and evolved in collaboration with a dozen stakeholders and black community members. Um, I will be going over the criteria. Oops. Um, the interpretation of theme and artist statement includes the artist statement where the artists themselves may speak to their intention behind their art piece. The statement is a part of the art submission process and can be either written or orally recorded and submitted. The interpretation of the theme is how well the curators think the art connected with and interpreted the theme. The final two selection criteria are technique and skill and creativity. This slide shows our stakeholders who will be serving a role on our art selection committee. We have specifically asked for representatives from the black community from each of our stakeholders are in our, and are at 50% representation. There is an intentional diversity on the selection committee to make sure we are modeling inclusion in practice. Our stakeholders in the selection committee have been purposeful and excited in their participation in the development of this project. When we receive art, we will filter out any art that doesn't meet the guidelines as the first oversight step. 
The materials for the art selection committee include the guidelines art must adhere to as a second oversight step. There are multiple checkpoints after these initial oversights as well. Following these are the Arts Advisory Council and the Parks Commission oversight steps reviewing the designs of the art exhibit banners, including the selected works. Our diverse art selection committee are highly qualified in the fields of equity and art curation and will select the final artwork to be included on the banners. Um, of note, we're, we're, we're currently working on um, some guidelines for the selection committee, which our art coordinator will be going through with the selection, art selection committee. Our call for art document has been a collaboration with all of our stakeholders. The call for art can be found in our project PDF under addendum G and includes the project's vision, Breathing Free Together, the theme, application link, eligibility, submission guidelines, and instructions, as well as um, the selection criteria, which we've already gone over. <laughs> as requested, we have um, added the city of San Ramon and the release of liability in our arts, art, artist submission waiver form. Um, the temporary public art display will consist of a co combination of hand painted and digitally printed banners. To address the concerns of vandalism, um, in order to protect the hand painted banners and the safety of the banners overall, duplicates will be made of the banners containing original art. And the banners containing original art will only be exhibited during secure public events or at secure locations, such as the inauguration. Digital rep reproductions of the banners will be used when exhibited for public display, such as um, the skate park fence. An anti-graffiti sealant will also be used on all vinyl banners to be hung for public display. Um, I'll be going over the QR code. So our QR codes stands for quick response code. To engage with the QR code, you open the camera on your smartphone and scan it, and it'll take you to the prompt, which is on SRSJC's Facebook page that was created specifically for this project. This is where community members are able to come and write a response to the prompt. All responses will be reviewed under our guidelines with push notifications to our team monitors, meaning every time there's a response, our team will be getting a notification saying that one was posted. Um, we will be exercising due diligence and we'll make this a safe space for all in the community. This is an example of a prompt we will use. All prompts will encourage dialogue under the theme of breathing free together. Um, we would like to emphasize the important place of the QR code in this public art project. Uh, the community engagement through the QR codes comprises half of our project, which our stakeholders were all really excited about. Um, the QR codes are the voice of the community and the healthy and nurturing dialogue we are trying to create as a collective. And it will be under strict monitoring and oversight for this request, um, for this, we request that you do um, approve the QR code component with the whole project. All are welcome. Um, upon recommendation from equity coordinators from SRVUSD, we are collaborate. Um, we have um, now it's opened up to include artwork from children under the age of thirteen. Uh, depending on submissions, two banners will include digitally printed artwork exclusively from submissions by children under the age of 13. We are collaborating with and know our stakeholders and have a responsibility to our community and our own children. And we are mindful of that as we develop this project. Um, we, uh, last October, we brought our project to the City of San Ramon for approval and the Arts Advisory Council forwarded it to the Parks Commission with a recommendation to approve. As we start this year, we are really excited to launch the project and um, yeah, we really believe that this is a community art project that is aimed to help promote racial equity so that we can all truly breathe free together. Thank you for your time, Commissioners. Thank you. At this time, do we want to go to uh, public comment then before we have uh, comments from um, commissioners? Yes, that would, that would be appropriate. Okay, all right. So at this time I will open um, for public comment. 
And maybe we could stop sharing the screen at this point. Oh, yes. Yeah, thank Great. you. And then I can see. Okay, it is 8.07 and I do have one written public comment and it's from Beverly Kumar regarding public art exhibit, Breathing Free Together. Chair Garros and Commissioners of the Parks and Community Services Commission of San Ramon, thank you for the opportunity to comment on public art exhibit, Breathing Free Together. I am the Arts and Cultural Commissioner of Contra Costa County representing District 2. Using public art as a medium for awareness, communities are able to challenge some of the biggest issues of our time. Public art is an innovative way to reach people in their everyday environments and confront easily overlooked issues. The Breathing Free Together art project has a unique way of moving the needle forward by encouraging dialogue on racial equity and justice. It gives a platform for those who feel voiceless, lending, leading to heal through collaboration and understanding a true service to the community. Public art should reflect the community around it and represent the hopes and lives of all community members. This is why I am not only very excited regarding this potential project, but am writing to you in support of it. Thank you, Beverly Kumar, District 2, Arts and Cultural Commissioner of Contra Costa County. Okay, thank you. Now, do we have any um, people that want to uh, speak to it? Christy, do we have we any? Do, we do not have any other public comment to speak to it, no. Okay, thank you. Then I will close the public comment. And then now I will um, open it up to the commissioners to speak to this issue. And I see uh, Commissioner Dorlick. Uh, thank you, Chair uh, Lucy Lopez. So uh, thank you for your uh, presentation. I think that uh, the uh, additional due diligence that you have performed uh, certainly takes the project to the next level. And at this point, I would make a, a motion to recommend that we approve the project and move it forward for staff to continue to work on it and to the city council for their final approval. Is there a second? Heidi, you are. Are we at a Are we at a point where we're entertaining? You're entertaining motions, Chair Lopez. Well, see. Commissioner Dorlick made the motion. We mm -hmm. can second it, and then you always have discussion. So, if that's the way he would like to proceed, normally we do discuss it. But if he wants to make this motion, we still can. I would. Discuss it. I would have an alternative motion. So actually, I'm gonna. I'm gonna not say anything right now. Actually. It's Procedurally, you need a motion for discussion. So the motion is on the table and then we can have discussion following that. I know that's the parliamentary procedure, yes. Um, so if, if there is a second to his motion, then we would proceed. But if there is no second, then it will not proceed. Hearing no second, then I will um, then go on to the next speaker. And I see uh, Commissioner Roberts. Thank you, Chair Lopez Lucy. Uh, first, I'm just gonna start off by saying thanks for the great presentation uh, this evening and taking the time to address the feedback given in the last meeting. So I uh, appreciate um, uh, you know, the, the, the group coming together and putting the extra time and effort uh, into addressing uh, the, those issues that were brought up in that last meeting. Um, I want to start by by sort of talking about the fact that I had an opportunity to be on a Zoom call uh, with a great with the great Winton Marsalis two nights ago, um, who now runs the jazz program at Juilliard, and he talked a lot about the importance of the arts, self expression, um, in society, especially when faced with adversity and challenging times, 
And it immediately uh, made me think about this project and how important these kinds of projects are for our community. So I just want to reiterate, um, you know, the fact that, you know, it, 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 the vision that you guys have here is, is fantastic. And I, and like I mentioned in the, uh, um, for the art advisory annual report um, that we just went through, um, this is, you know, I hope to see more of these types of projects in the future. Um, although we're, you know, we're kind of working through some of the, the um, items, you know, to, uh, in terms of the execution of it. Um, that being said, um, I really appreciate the addendums you've included because it's added a lot of clarity um, around a lot of the questions that we had in the last meeting. Um, and, but if I could just focus um, our attention on the process for the art that will not be selected for public display, uh, because it's, there, there's, it seems like there's a, there's a pretty good process for the art that will be selected for public display. And there's various steps for that to, to, uh, you know, to, to, to eventually be included in, in the public display. But I'd like to focus just on, on the art that won't be selected for public display. Um, and it's my understanding that most of that art will make it to the social media platform, that site, during the installation period. Is that correct? Uh, no, that's incorrect. Uh, okay. do you want, would you like me to clarify? Uh, yeah, so let me just real quick. So my understanding is that um, most of that art, um, uh, you know, we're, we're really talking like 90% of that art as well as 100% of the public comment will be vetted by the, the uh, San Ramon Social Justice Collective only. Is that, is that, so that's part of my question as well. Yes, we have a, um, a pretty rigorous uh, vetted pro uh, filtering process, um, which because we own those social media sites, um, yes, we do own that process of oversight as well, but there is that added um, layer of, you know, all of the art that's coming in, it goes to that first step of going through our checks um, of our guidelines. So no, it's not accurate to say that 90% of the art will either make it, um, will also make it to our social media. Um, I think we anticipate, um, you know, I can't give you a number, but, um, our project guideline process, and as Nana so beautifully said before, you know, we're parents, we're members of this community too, and we wanna make sure that all the art that's being posted anywhere for consumption by our youth, by our own children, students, and everyone will be suitable. So um, I believe that our process will be high, highly selective as well. Okay, so, so again, like I said, um, a, a great portion of the, art that is not selected for public dis display will be will be because I read in your in your um, program that you're going to try to put most of that art on on the on social media. That's not the, the art that's not selected for public display, correct? Yes, if it passes our guidelines. And additionally, in our art submission um, process, we also additionally have a social media waiver that's been um, under legal review. And so all children under the age of 13, 13 and under, um, they will have to sign a social media waiver and their parents have to sign off on it. So additionally, we wanna make sure we're protecting those children and their names and their artwork. And um, so, yeah, um, actually not just children at 13 and under, um, all anybody who would like their artwork um, to be publicly. Um, and, and I appreciate you bringing that up because Part of why I'm asking this is because, um, you know, uh, you know, as commissioners, obviously, you know, uh, as much as I love this project, and I, and I really do, um, we also are charged with making sure that we're we're looking at the entire community as far as how this fits with the entire community, right? So, um, since the city is sponsoring this project, um, I think it would make sense for at least one member of the Arts Advisory Committee. And I'm not speaking for the Arts Advisory Committee um, because I know that they have a lot on their plate. They've got a lot going on. But again, like I said, since the city is sponsoring something like this, it would make sense for someone on the Arts Advisory Committee to be involved in the process of the social media as well as the art that's not gonna be selected for public display. 
So you mentioned getting notifications mm -hmm. with the QR codes. I think that's fantastic. And thank you so much for uh, you know, creating some clarity around that uh, because that was actually one of my big questions last month, right? Was, was the QR codes and the prompts, you know, what does that look like? How does that work? Um, but, you know, if, if we could, if you could somehow, you know, include uh, either a member of the, uh, you know, the arts advisory committee, who's not a part of the social justice, you know, uh, group, um, but, but someone from the arts advisory committee or, or maybe a sub, uh, a subcommittee from the arts advisory committee to also be a part of that vetting process that you will be going through for all of that art that's not going to be on public display, but will be put on social media, including all of the social media uh, discussions, I think it, it, it would help solve, um, uh, you know, this overhanging um, uh, issue for me. Um, so that that's just something that, that's just a suggestion. It's something that I wanted to bring up to the entire commission. Um, it's, it's a recommendation to, to my fellow commissioners to think about, uh, the fact that, you know, we're, we're looking at not, we're not just talking about the art that's just going to be displayed for public display, but we're talking about all the social media and all the art that's not going to be a public display that will be on the website. Right. And, and, and I think that we need to make sure that that is, uh, that the city, the arts community or the arts committee, essentially what I'm saying is involved in that process as well. I mean, it's just, a, it, that would be just a simple write-in to have mm -hmm. someone get those notifications um, on the Advi Arts Advisory Committee as well, just so that they're a part of the process. That's, that's, that's really the biggest thing for me. Um, Can I re re reiterate back to you? So, I mean, we currently have our own vetting process, but the request is that we um, additionally ask in addition to Nana Shastri, another member of the Arts Advisory Committee to be part of the social media. Yeah, committee. someone who's not a, a, involved with the San Ramon social justice group, right? Someone that is part of the, you know, someone other, essentially what I'm saying is someone other than Nana Shastri because she's, I know that she's a part of the committee, uh, the advisory committee, the Arts Advisory Committee, but she's also a part of the social justice committee. So um, yeah. it, that's just a suggestion. That's something that I wanted to bring forth to my fellow commissioners. Uh, you know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm asking too much uh, uh, of the, of the, you know, the uh, arts advisory committee. I know they've got a lot to do, but, you know, and looking at this as being a citywide project, something sponsored by the city, um, you know, I mentioned before, you also mentioned it again, um, you know, you know, this is kind of like you, you have the keys to the soul of the city, right? And we just have to make sure that we are, crossing our T's and dotting our I's and ensuring that this is something for the entire community at large. And I just think it would behoove us to uh, have someone from the Arts Advisory Committee involved in that process as well, because I didn't see anyone um, from the Arts Advisory Committee brought in that process. And that's, so that's, that's my feedback for, for today. Yeah, thank you. Nena, do you, yeah. wanna, do you wanna say anything? Um, no, yeah, I I, um, yeah, I think we will uh, definitely look into this, and uh, it's a good good suggestion, and I think it makes sense. Um, so we will, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, I know we can't right now make a decision. We're just two of us, a bigger collective. Um, so we will, uh, you know, talk about this and um, definitely, uh, you know, uh, be amenable to this suggestion. Thank you, thank you very much, and again, thank you so much for putting all the extra effort into this, and thanks for your patience. <laughs> uh, right, uh, because this is this is a big deal, and and I, and I think it's fantastic, and I appreciate all of you for putting the hard work into uh, putting something like this um, uh, in front of the city. So yeah, thank you. it was definitely a lot of work, and um, and I have to say that especially creating the social media pages and all of that was was a lot of um, work of love because uh, we had the youth involved in it. And at the time when we got, had them do it, it was their, they were high schoolers, they had their finals going on. And uh, <laughs> in spite of all of that, uh, you know, I would, we would be sending texts to them at like eight o'clock in the night and they'd be, uh, you know, doing everything. And then of course it was the holiday time. So um, I'm really grateful for the team uh, and the youth members who have really put in a lot of heart and passion into this. So um, thank you both Nina and, and Stephanie for being here tonight to do this. And Commissioner Roberts, um, I just got a quick update from my collective. They said um, if it 
If it means a yes from you, then yes, we would happily invite a member from the Arts Advisory Committee to be part of that social media. Got account. it, got it. That was, <laughs> that's quick, uh, that's quick work there. Thank you for, for doing oh, that. Uh, and <laughs> and, and I, I'd be I'd be interested to hear from my fellow commissioners here. I'm sure that they all have something to say. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, Commissioner Kinston Haley, please. You're, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> All right. Hi, guys. Okay. So I have a couple questions. It's going to be easier than last time, I promise. <laughs> um, one is I want to make sure I understood the QR code process because I've dealt with some projects like this before. So sometimes when you um, ask for electronic responses, there's a function where you have it in a holding bucket. And then the administrator can go in and say which ones they want to push along. Is that the process we're talking about here? Or is it, it gets posted automatically and it relies on somebody to review it, to pull it back down. So Nina, can you tell me that? Um, we can put in it, put it into that bucket and then that way it will give us, you know, time to review them. And that yeah. is precisely what we want to do uh, and not, you know, kind of have immediate uh, sort of. Yeah. I would recommend that just because I know you talk about some electronic screeners, automatic screeners, but just they're not perfect, right? Correct. And so yeah, for you guys to have that opportunity to take a look at it Correct. and then push it on, that would probably be um, be a good thing. Correct. I was especially glad to see your partnership with the San Ramon Valley Unified School District. I was especially, especially excited that you got San Ramon Valley Council of PTAs on board. So that does say something to me uh, that resonates with me. What are you guys thinking of in terms of protecting the artwork and heaven forbid cleanup of the artwork if something happens? Do you guys have a process in place for addressing that? Um, so I'm assuming that you're talking about the banners that are going to be published. Yeah. So those banners are all going to be digital reproductions. So no original artwork will be hung. And the turnaround for reprinting another banner is about one to two days. And so, okay. or one, about one day. Um, so we do have a process in place and we have printers ready to go. So, and they're aware of what we're doing. And um, yeah, that, that's basically. Okay. Okay. And then on addendum A regarding social media. So back to you, Nina. Um, you know, you guys talk about the social media community guidelines and specifically you say conversations that negatively target a specific individual, race, religion, culture, sexual orientation, gender, identity, group, organization. Um, can you confirm that group or organization also includes the police department? Um, I think uh, Stephanie has an answer for that and she has okay. a for it, yeah. Um, yes, of course. The police department is an organization in San Ramon and we have built in oversights and social media guidelines which allow us to remove or block content or people if necessary, especially if there is violent language against our police who we do really appreciate for all their work. Mm -hmm. Um, we understand that, you know, this question is not specific to this project either. We know that this is a nationwide issue that's being raised everywhere. And um, yeah, we want to be able to engage with these questions in a really thoughtful and peaceful way. So yes, our project guidelines do cover the police yeah. department. I feel like we've had generally a history, you know, of working so collaboratively with our police department mm -hmm. on these types of issues. And I would never want to see them, you know, portrayed in a derogatory way and impede that momentum. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I appreciate that you guys are sensitive to that. Um, with regard to artwork and the prompts being brought to the Arts Advisory, uh, uh, Arts Advisory Co Committee and the Commission, I do support if, you know, if this moves forward, I would support that both the artwork and the related prompt be brought to both groups for approval. I feel like they need each other, you know what I mean? We need to know how you're gonna position the prompt with regard to the artwork. I do, I am sensitive to the fact that, you know, you can't necessarily come up with the prompt without the artwork, so I get that, but I, I would hope that that would be part of the approval process, that they be coupled together. And then finally, I just wanna say, see, I got to finally already. Um, I just wanna say that 
this is really important, this project being the first of its kind in some ways for this community. Um, I think that we need to do it as constructively as possible. We need to, so I know Stephanie, last time I kind of put your feet to the fire a little bit, but that's what the city council appointed me and appointed us to do. You know, this is gonna go to them and it's our job to make sure we asked all those questions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and that it's something as Scott said, uh, Commissioner Roberts said is good for the entire community. Last time I told you guys, I have no problems with appropriately and constructively addressing hard issues, you know? And I too am a big supporter of art to increase that, to um, foster that constructive dialogue. Um, but it's important that we do this as successfully as possible if we're gonna have other such projects. So this more than any other point in time is gonna be really critical that it's rolled out and implemented successfully. Will every San Ramon resident love it? Of course not, but we need to do it in a way that it's not detrimental to the community and that it, it promotes the healing and the harmony that I know you guys are trying to promote. For me, um, it was very poignant to see Mitchell Hobson involved because I have worked with him. I, I've seen glimpses, maybe he's listening, but I have seen glimpses into his heart and his character. And I feel like that is a, a very wonderful reflection on you guys and what you're trying to do. Um, and I feel that there are more effective ways to address issues that are can be sticky wickets like social justice, right? And there, there are more effective ways and less effective ways. I would just say, a certain part of this process is a trust and a faith in the collective. And I appreciate you guys are moms because, you know, there's a certain responsibility with moms. Um, so um, yeah, there's a trust and there's a faith that you guys will take this seriously, which I know you do having heard from you a couple of times and that you see that this is groundbreaking in some ways for our community. And I know you take that responsibility seriously. So um, I know there are other commissioners that would like to speak, but um, Commissioner or Chair Lopez Lucy, I am prepared to, uh, to uh, make a motion when you're, uh, barring other commissioners are not interested in making a motion. After we've heard from everybody, I'm, I'm pleased to make a motion when you're ready. Thank you. Thank you. We ha do have two other commissioners yeah. that wish to speak before we go to a, a motion then, but I'll, I'll remember that. Uh, Commissioner uh, Beerbaum. Uh, thank, thank you, uh, Chairwoman uh, Lopez Lucy. Um, f first of all, I, I want to say um, thank you for all the hard work that you guys have put into this. Um, I think I said this back at the last meeting. Your presentation and the quality of the work that you put into it uh, speaks volumes. Um, um, it's one of the best ones that I have seen as a commissioner. Um, I am hardened by a couple of the comments that um, a couple of the other commissioners got back from you. Um, I, was, I, I am very concerned about the QR code uh, and then the interaction with the public uh, and making sure that there is a filter on comments before they go live. Um, I think we have all lived through a horrible week in the history of this country and we see what words can do. And I, I, I just wanna make sure that before something flows out there, um, there is somebody who is looking at it and, and, and there is a level of trust with, with, with your organization that you will do what you said you will do. And, and, and I believe that. Uh, but I also um, agree with Commissioner Kensington Lee on if, if the uh, response can be put into a bucket, then reviewed before it's released out to the public, I think that that will be uh, a good safeguard. Um, 
I also think that we have to look at this as a pilot project. And I hope that what we're doing here is starting something that'll have a long-term um, life for the city. But I would highly recommend that after the first cycle through that the project needs to be reviewed. It needs to have a, you know, an action report coming out of it. And it needs to be brought back to the commission before another phase, another cycle is authorized, simply because we need to make sure that it worked and we need to make sure that what didn't work, we know what we can do to fix. Um, it, if, you know, and, and I, I do believe that what you guys are trying to do is essential for this community. It's essential for um, the society as a whole is that we start addressing some of these um, longstanding issues that in many cases have been ignored um, and you know downplayed as not important um, and, and, and truly need uh, addressing. So I am excited about your project, but again, I'm a little cautious like the other two commissioners that we need to make sure that we do it right the first time. And even if we don't do it right, that we at least have the uh, process by which we can come back and make appropriate adjustments so that we so that it can be something that can live on. Thank you, um, Commissioner Oslin. Thank you, Chair Lucy Lopez. Uh, Steph, Stephanie and Nina, thank you very much for your presentation, uh, and I really very much appreciate your due diligence, you listened to the questions that we had a month ago and you answered them. And I really appreciate your taking that effort during the holidays and working with the students too during finals to, to give us what we needed. Um, my question, I totally, before I go into my question, I totally support my three other commissioners that have shared uh, their questions. Um, I support their concerns as well, but I also feel really confident that you guys are turning over every stone. You're really looking at this very carefully and, um, and you, you want to do this right. My one question is how you're planning on doing your outreach to get the art uh, commissioned by the community. I haven't really heard that. Um, are you going to be partnering with your stakeholders for them to also promote this on their websites? Um, you know, because I know that there's, you know, you want to get this going soon. And so that was, that was kind of my only, uh, burning question that I had. Yeah, we already got some feedback from the district and from the council of PTAs, and they're ready to distribute this to their students and, you know, get this project going with them. And we do have a process in the, um, in the addendum where in our call for art, when it's released, um, we're going to, um, in order to achieve um, equi equitability for everybody. Um, we are gonna post it on social media, but we're, we're also going to post flyers and posters. And um, we're also going to have a Google phone number um, just so that we can increase accessibility for people who maybe don't have access to internet and computers. Um, they can call us and if they hear about it, they can get more information from us through a Google phone number. And um, everything's going to be translated into Spanish, all of our forms and waivers. Um, we have currently, I think, four waiver forms that have already gone under extensive legal review. And all of those things will be translated into Spanish um, for the community. And um, if I can provide any clar clarification, me and Nana, around the QR code and just ease your minds around that process, because we take this as seriously as you do. Um, we have already activated the highest level of filtering. We've already blocked certain words from being used on those pages. And we also invite 
um, you know, one of the members from the Arts Advisory Council to be part of that review process. But we want to assure you that we take it really seriously. And but we at the same time, it's the heartbeat of this project because this is where the community dialogue is going to happen. And we want to make sure that members are able to kind of say, yeah, this has been a really hard year or like, yeah, like, thank you for talking about this because we haven't really seen this in a public space. And just to give people um, just that avenue to express um, just their experience from, uh, excuse my language, what, what was a hellish year, <laughs> 2020. And yeah, so um, I, I, hope, I hope that eases some of your concerns. Hey, thank you. Well, <clears throat> I want to commend you both. I mean, I think after I got this packet and, and was reading through it, I mean, you have really put your heart and soul in this. And I think you've covered so much and answered a lot of our questions. So I just appreciate what you all have done because I think you've done an excellent job. And I know I serve on a lot of committees or whatever. And I think, you know, you've really covered extensively. So I'm, I'm very pleased at that. And um, I, um, I'm not going to reiterate everything, but I do agree with my former commissions. What they said that they were concerned about was the QR code. And, um, and then putting that in a bucket would, you know, really enhance that and that to be sure that the advisory committee and uh, our commission gets to review the, the art before it goes public. I think those are, are major concerns because as uh, Commissioner Robert said, we do represent the best, you know, to get the city's um, opinions and to be sure that we get this done right, as I've said. So I just will not reiterate all the things, but thank you for your hard work. And um, you've really answered a lot of questions, explained a lot of things in your information that you gave us to read. So I appreciate that. And um, Commissioner Heidi uh, Kensington Lee, would you please uh, have your motion if you, um, have it ready to go. I actually like being referred to as Commissioner Heidi. I think we should do that always. <laughs> I think it would be easier because I don't want to offend anyone, but it, it depends into, I am practicing that and practicing it. Yeah. Well, before I make my motion, I want to say mm -hmm. to Stephanie and Nina, when, if in fact this project moves forward and you go to city council, you're going to thank us for all the grilling. Okay. You're going to say, Oh, I'm so glad they asked all those questions. We're so prepared to answer questions at city council. So trust me, you'll be glad. So Madam Chair, um, with your permission, I would like to move that we approve the updated San Ramon Social Justice Collective temporary community public art project, including the project concept, the location, and the in interactive community QR code with the understanding that number one, artwork will be um, submitted with the prompts for approval to the Arts Advisory Committee and the, the uh, Parks and Community Services Commission. Number two, that we are guaranteed there will be a, uh, a prompt response holding bucket for approval and review before going on. However, Christy, you wanna word that. Um, and number three, that the collective agrees to come back to the commission with a report, reviewing how the project went and giving us all the the, the results of how it went. Do we have a second? A second. Yes. All right, that's a long, long motion. And I hope our secretary was able to comprehend all of it. I tried my best. Was that okay, Christy? Yeah. You're, okay. you're okay with it? Are you ready for roll call? Uh, if, everyone, uh, if everyone understands the motion, is that correct? Okay, yes, we're ready for roll call. Commissioner Dorlick. Uh, did I miss a second or was there a second? There was. Dawn had. Yeah, Dawn. Dawn seconded. Oh, okay, then I missed it. All right, yes. Commissioner Keniston Lee. Aye. Commissioner Birnbaum. Aye. Commissioner Roberts. Aye. Vice Chair Osland. Aye. Chair Lopez Lucy. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, um, uh, commissioners, for all your feedback. But I want to again thank you, uh, Stephanie and Aina, uh, that you have done so much work and for bringing this to us and giving us all these, you know, issues, getting our answers question. And I wish you the best of luck as you go forward for making this a successful project. 
Chair Lopez Lucy, I'm going to excuse myself. Yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you, commissioners, for meeting us with, with us tonight. Um, you know, we're ecstatic. We've been kind of like chomping at the bit to get this started. And um, I'm really excited for the meeting following this meeting with our collective to just celebrate this decision. Um, so we thank you for being so detailed and thoughtful in your responses to us. Um, and we commit the same to you. Um, I just wanted to ask one question, if that's okay. Certainly. Yeah, um, we were just wondering what the um, next step, just for our knowledge, um, what we can expect at the city council meeting. Is that also a step for approval or is that um, just presenting the project before them? Type of situation? I think Kathy could answer that for us, please. Yeah, as this is a temporary public art piece, it doesn't necessarily go to the city council. Um, so the Parks Commission has purview over the art in the parks and we may give them an informational uh, piece. So I'll get back to you if we would like to do a presentation, but sure. um, no, this should be sufficient. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Kathy. Kathy. Uh, I just want to reiterate our thanks. I'm like so excited right now. <laughs> I'm sure you are, and it, it, you'll need a lot of luck and you'll, you'll, you'll succeed as you're very detailed and, and have your heart in the right place. Thank you. And I thank you for trusting us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We will now proceed to 8.3, selection of an advisory committee interview panel. And I believe, Kathy, you will explain. Um, yeah, this, these are a couple of simple items that we have to talk about. Um, you know, it's that time of year that half of the terms of all the advisory committee members are up and we need to conduct interviews. And so there's a lot of interviews that need to be conducted due to COVID-19. Of course, they'll all be handled via Zoom, but uh, I need some volunteers <laughs> that would be available and willing to conduct interviews the week of February 22nd. Once we have all of the applicants, then Christy can schedule those because until we know the mass that we have, um, it's hard to know if it could just be one couple of people who could do it or if we really need more commissioners to help out. Um, I do expect maybe a higher than uh, normal uh, number of applicants due to the elections happening. People are very aware of elections and appointments right now and they're interested in being involved with their community so along with the incumbents that we have in each of those committees i would expect that there will be a, a, a good handful of people in each committee that may be interested in being interviewed for the positions so that's why we're seeking to make sure we've got on some of your calendars for that week I want to ask a question now. You're saying that we proceed as we have in the past since we had an, a, another idea to go forward, but we cannot, as I, as we had talked, may perhaps that cannot be done. That we interview some, you know, have a we had a group meeting. I think I think Commissioner um, Birnbaum, you were the one last year that kind of set that ex wanted that to go forward. Uh -huh. Are you talking about the teen council or are you just talking about just the regular interviews? I'm talking about the regular interviews first. Teen council is next. Yeah, oh. I, yeah I, I mean, you know, I, I, you're, what you're proposing, Kathy, is, is two or three of us would interview a candidate over Zoom right. with, a set, with a set of questions. And then if there was another candidate, we'd interview the next candidate and the next candidate. 100%. And then the three of us or two of us would ma make a recommendation, correct? Correct. It's just the same basic yeah. process yeah. that we normally use. Yeah. It's just that there should be a lot. And so we want to get on everyone's calendars because it becomes a, a little laborious if we don't have you scheduled. I'm available to help. Uh, I, I, I'll volunteer. I, I'm available as well. And, and I remember actually sitting with Don and, and Julia last year, and I can't believe for, for some interviews, and I can't believe we're already back here again doing this. It's uh, like this year is just <laughs> unbelievable and gone. Okay, wonderful. So Julia, Don, uh, Scott, we've got you all listed as potentials. And then uh, uh, Chair Lopez Lucy and Commissioner Dorlick, if it turns out that you'll be available that week, please reach out to Christy 
um, in case she needs additional help. Well, that week is fine with me also. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Would you like me to move on to uh, 8.4? Please. Okay, so that's what you were talking about. So in regards to the teen council screening and interview process, you know, we had planned based on feedback last from last year to implement an assessment center. I think that's what you were referring right. to. Um, exercise as a part of the screening process. The kind of the key component to that was bringing all the kids into a big room, putting them into teams, having them work together on a process and having evaluators moving around watching. Well, due to COVID-19, that is not a particularly easy thing to accomplish. Yes, it is possible to do it online and put them into breakout rooms, but it it doesn't have that same interactive component that we we're really looking for. So at this point with the moratoriums on gathering, we're planning to skip that and try it out next year instead, just for pure and simple, we can't pull people together. So unless, unless that's something you really want us to keep pursuing, we would go with the same basic process that was used last year where the applications come in, staff review the application, make sure it's complete and it followed the basic instructions. We would have three commissioners review the application using a rubric as a guide and assign a numerical score to the application. They work together to make sure they're all basically looking at it the same way. Then the top 39 applicants based on the scores would be invited for an oral interview. Then the other, another three commissioners would conduct 10 minute interviews over the course of three nights. It's quite a fast and speedy schedule. This had happened after COVID last year. So they did do this via Zoom. And as, a, as I understand, although the commissioners could speak to it, it actually was a much better process and was quite efficient. So who knows, maybe something we actually like. Uh, the interview panel then makes a recommendation to the full commission based on the interviews, the applications and the scores provided by the commissioners who screened the applications and the attendance records and information from staff about how returning uh, applicants might fit. So all of the, the sum total of all the information that's been gathered. And then also those that are disqualified on the initial screening or did score high enough for an interview or were not selected after the oral interview would receive a letter thanking them for their application, encourage them to apply again, or to even get involved as an ambassador since the ambassador program is really doing well on the teen council level. So tonight, what I guess I'm really looking for is any feedback you have on the process, i.e. any tweaks you wanna make, um, whether or not you're okay with us leaving the assessment center for next year, and then to identify who will be screening and who will be interviewing. Um, in your packet, you noticed there was that nice schedule and that's because I knew you'd wanna know the dates, but the, the screening will take place between February 22nd and March 5th. And the interviewing would be scheduled the week of March 22nd. So you'll also have one new commissioner by that time. So you can always assign one of them to do one of those tasks as well. Um, but it would be three people to screen and three people to interview. So thoughts, concerns, issues? Uh, I'll be happy to interview again. And I have a question about the application. I noticed last year, I, I was on the interview panel and, you know, of course we received a packet of all the applicants and their, their applications. And I noticed that a lot of, it's not a lot, but a few questions seemed a bit redundant. Is there any opportunity to maybe streamline some of the questions that are in the application? Yeah, certainly. Um, I thought we looked at them and I will pull those back up and we can uh, certainly kind of adjust them to reflect not having uh, anything duplicative. I'm trying to think, Christy, with a date that the application goes open. Is that, I have to pull up that schedule. Hold on one second. It's like January 25th. So yeah, we won't have a chance to have a meeting prior to that date, but if you can, uh, if you trust staff to do it, we can go ahead and uh, make sure that we don't have redundant questions. That's that's fine with me. Um, can, I, can I also suggest maybe that the three commissioners that are going to do the interview um, get the questions and, and they work the questions 
and, and modify them the way they want to um, and, and get them back to you, Kathy, to make sure that, you know, we're not asking something we're not supposed to. But um, having done the interviews now for like three years in a row, um, I, I, I think the people who are interviewing, we kind of you kind of get your own rhythm and you kind of get you kind of know what you want to ask. And I'm just suggesting that the, whoever the three are that are doing the interviews, that they have some say in what the questions are. Absolutely. I think that's a that's actually a great suggestion. We have plenty of time on that one. So no problem if we select the three interview people tonight to then task them with that, they can bring it back. That's absolutely fine. And actually, potentially it's a great idea uh, that Julia, we could maybe have the people who are gonna do screening yeah, help do with the questions for the um, application. We could do a part, say that again, Kathy. I'm, I had an interruption and so I couldn't hear it, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I just I just thought Don's uh, suggestion was a good one that we, <laughs> use the committee who's going to interview to actually write the questions for the interviews. And by that same association, we have the commissioners who are working on reviewing the application to help look and look at those questions. I think that would be that, I think that's good too. Um, I know I've done the last couple of years of screening the application and then, yeah, there's some, we might shorten it somewhat or something, but I, I I guess send us another app. I mean, I returned all those, you know, to the the staff. So it'd be good if we could see the uh, application again with the questions, and maybe mm -hmm. we'd have some comments that we could get back. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and and actually, at the interview process, uh, we have uh, removed some replication and you know, kind of restructured uh, some other phrasing of the questions you know, prior to the interview among the commissioners that were doing the interviews. So we did that more on an ad hoc basis, but not on a formal basis. So I, I would also wanna ask Commissioner Ramesh, what's your input? You, you, you ran the student council. <laughs> Yeah, um, so first I want to sort of second what Commissioner Oslin said about the questions. I think that's feedback that um, the team council got as well, has been getting as well for the past few years. Um, so I think definitely we could probably condense the amount of questions that we're asking and focus it more so that one, the commissioners have less to read and two, um, it's just easier on applicants. Um, something else I thought we could potentially look into is doing group interviews on Zoom because um, I know something that the commissioners were interested in is seeing group interaction. And I think that especially on a Zoom environment, interviews can be quite awkward. And I think um, assuming that you do wanna see more interaction and you want to get to know what a teen is like more as a person, I think a group interview would be better just for a virtual platform. Can you elaborate on what you're, um, what you're suggesting? Um, if you do want to go down that route, I think just maybe choosing a small group of maybe four or five applicants and um, ha asking questions, having them sort of interact with one another, or I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the interview questions are. I don't remember them, but if, or that's something you could look into in the future as well, like maybe not this year, maybe next year, but I definitely think a group interview would work better because um, you could really see people interacting with one another and also would force them to be spontaneous rather than rehearsed which I think is really easy on an online platform because they could just like be reading off their screen, for example. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other comments? Well, <clears throat> do we proceed as normal or do you want to go down the, what um, commi <clears throat> student commissioner Ramesh has suggested? Do you think that was workable? Comments from anyone? I, I, you know, I, I understand, you know, the group concept. Um, I just don't know how it would really work well on Zoom. Um, you know, I kind of, I, I kind of watched what they did for the the city council. Um, you know, it it wasn't, you know, it was okay. Um, 
I'm I'm really in favor of a group interaction when you when you when you got them in a room and you could kind of the the whole feeling of the interaction somehow when when you're on a on, on a screen it just doesn't come across the way that I would like to see it. So I, I'm in favor of keeping the process the way it is if we have to do it over Zoom. I think that's right on Zoom. I, I think that would be difficult because you, it, it's so different than when you have the person sitting across from you or whatever. It does make a difference. If you can see their reactions much better and you can be kind of stoic on uh, Zoom if you wish, yes. So I, I would think that if no one objects, we should go uh, with what we have done um, in the past, the last year, and combining, shortening the questions, perhaps, and, and some uh, basic questions we're interviewing, yeah. Got enough? You got enough feedback? No. Oh, Carol, my hand, my hand was up. I'm sorry. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Fine. Um, ahead, um, I would I would have to agree with Commissioner Birnbaum because um, sometimes when you get into a group setting, you get one perhaps two dominant, you know, participants, and someone who perhaps is a, a little bit more thoughtful, perhaps a little bit more withdrawn, doesn't have the chance to really express themselves. Whereas in an individual interview, and I I think the other commissioners that have done the interviews in the past will acknowledge the fact that sometimes there's a very you know, quiet person that comes in but just has an intensity that may not be drawn out if they're in a group setting with you know, a, a dominant one or two people. So uh, I like the individual uh, interviews as well because it gives everybody a chance to, to be themselves and, and not trying to uh, you know, outdo someone else to get the attention. I, I would I would agree with that, um, especially at this level, this age, right? Uh, so, um, absolutely, I, I definitely agree with that. Competitive, yes. Me too. Okay, so I think we're all in agreement. I'm happy to interview again, like I did last year. Um, but if if someone else wants to do that, I'm happy to review either. Well, I'll raise my hand to interview again. I'm, I, that's probably the only skill that I'm developing. Yeah, so will I. I'll interview. Okay, so I've got Julia Will Don on interviews. So that means we'll need uh, hopefully three people on screening. And we do have uh, Commissioner Keniston Lee and our new commissioner as well, if are the commissioners here need one? We'll need at least one, but uh, well, clear, clearly they're not here, so clearly they're on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it works. <laughs> that is, but I don't mind. I don't do. I don't mind the screening. Okay. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I, I did it last time. Last time the screening was 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 fine. Um, we had, we split it into three. There were three of us that did it. Yes. Um, and you know, it was it was quite a lot. Um, even even uh, even splitting it into three three groups, um, so I would hope that you know it sounds like there's going to be more right, uh, even though this time, but it's still going to get narrowed down to the same number. It sounds like, yeah, right. It's going to get narrowed down to the same number. Okay. Yeah, but you guys are going to have to. If there's a hundred candidates, you guys got to read a hundred hundred applications. Right. I, it, which is yeah. No, it. it Carol, uh, <laughs> we. <laughs> We definitely we spent we spent a good amount of time doing that last last year. Yeah, sure. but staff is going to tighten up the questions, so they'll be less. Yeah, I think if there is that might be, and then we have to be sure that you know. Um, I know that um, I probably was stricter than some of them on the on the inter, on the uh, screening, but that's you know I was kind of did what we were supposed to do, so. All right, well, excellent. So I've got the different names down here. We um, can approach uh, Commissioner Keniston Lee and the new commissioner and see if one of them would be willing to jump on to the screening with you. And what I will do is uh, we can have Christy distribute the, the application questions that were on last year and then between uh, 
you two, Commissioner Lopez Lucy and Robert, take a look at those questions and see if you have any others or how you might want to change them um, and give us some feedback on those. And then we'll make sure that we work with the city clerk to uh, readjust some of the questions on the application. Yeah, sounds and very Christy, good. Can, can you get, get the list out of the, the interview questions to the three of us? Yes. So that we can look at it and then maybe the three of us can find a time where we kind of talk it, talk it through. Yes, absolutely. Yes. That's assuming that we'll get a fourth commissioner. I guess we can't talk until we have the fourth commissioner. <laughs> it's, you should get them very soon. So, all right, I think that's everything that I needed. Thank you so much for your willingness to do this with, for our teen council. I know that these individual interviews do make a difference. It's sometimes the you know, first interview some of our teens have really had that's for something like this. And so it's a great opportunity for them to interview. And I appreciate your commitment to interviewing 39 because it's a lot. Um, and also taking the time to review the applications too. So I uh, appreciate that time commitment. Right. <clears throat> well, interviewing is always a, ch a, a challenge. And I know in our teen um, job fair that we had, we really always recommended the teens have a mock interview because they got feedback and that would help not only getting a job, but in this situation also would give you more confidence. But I don't think that's going to happen at the teen job fair this year because it'll be on Zoom also. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to go on staff reports 9.1, Recreation Program and Community Services Report. Did anyone have any specific uh, comments or um, suggestions or anything? I, I just the comment, I, I, think, I think the department did a great job on, on Christmas, you guys. You guys figured out innovative ways. You got, you got, you know, you got Santa out there, and you got, you know, answering letters um, again. You know, um, you guys are very nimble and you know, reactive to the to to the real world out there. And and thank you for doing that. I will pass it along, Mark. I was we were impressed with some of the things the staff came up with. There's a lot of letters. Santa was popular this year. Yeah. Well, they didn't have that. Was part of being at home. I mean, you have that. Um, and I, I think I, you all did a wonderful job from all the innovative ideas you had. And the Christmas trees were wonderful. People went by and it was, it was, uh, and they're still up. So you can even go enjoy them through the end of the month. And I was impressed by, I mean, I can't believe how many swimmers that we've had. I think that's just fantastic. And I mean, there's been some gold weather too. And I think they, sh we should pass that on to the aqua people that you know they're doing a great job and, and must be doing something really well to get you know continue with that number of people i should also reflect that with the santa the teen council uh stepped up and helped monitor those zoom calls and acted um which was great because we had our traditional santa and um he's too busy to be learning all that technology information so he really needed those teams to help out that was great i love it i love the christmas trees they were really they're really mm -hmm. nice it's it's so fun to walk around and look at all of them and and all the decorations and who's responsible for them and yeah the library was i loved it with all the prints and material it was so I, that was my favorite because it was so <laughs> innovative that they used all paper you know, from books and everything and made out the cut it out and everything. And I know the foundations, uh, all of those ornaments were, because we usually have the, on the holiday on the farm, we have a table that we sell used ornaments. And so these were all in our storage to be sold of which you couldn't have, but they were all donated by someone in the community. Wow. So we used all, all donated ornaments. The only thing we purchased was the, some of the, um, ribbon the rest was all donated mm -hmm. yeah thank you uh kathy and department for for just uh you know being able to adjust um in this type of year uh and you know and again we've been talking about this all night about giving the community an outlet uh to be creative and to uh, and to still and to still 
uh, be involved in something, even though we're, we're going through such a, a tough time. Um, so, so thank you for that. And, and in addition, uh, you know, in terms of the aquatics, um, I said this in our last meeting or in the meeting that we, we got the presentation from them. I mean, to be able to provide this also out this, another outlet to, to, you know, it's not just art, it's also, you know, uh, you know, the physical aspect and giving that to, to people as well. Um, you know, kudos to them to, for the hard work and everything they're doing to adjust in this kind of environment um, to, to give that outlet to, to those people as well. So thank you to all of you. Mm -hmm. And the meals that we provided, I think that's a wonderful asset to our community to, that, to think that, you know, 28,163 meals were provided in 2020. I mean, that's just amazing. So, I mean, I just, you can't thank you enough for what you do. Mm -hmm. I will pass that on. We have some awesome staff. So um, I always tell them to tune in to the, if they don't watch the whole commission meeting to tune in to the end so that they can, <laughs> they can hear this part. That's good. Yeah. Very impressive. So if we don't have any further comments, we'll go to uh, 9.2 maintenance and operations report. If you have anything for there, I was out walking and I did see that one of the fields looked really that had just been done fresh and all so they, it looked very nice so I know that they're working on those all. I would have to say that after this COVID break we will have the best athletic fields of any city in, in, in the region. I mean we've always had great fields but the you know the maintenance staff, they, they're, they're having their opportunity to do everything that they ever wanted to do and not have to worry about, you know, arguing with coaches. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And you know what? There's a uh, public uh, services staff on our attendees so they can hear you. Oh, well, that's good because they are doing a great job. Okay. All right. So, um, I know Heidi has um, has been asked to be excused. Uh, city Council, do you, uh, Kathy, want to report on updates on City Council? Uh, now I just have to think for a second because I listened to it. So last night they uh, had a long meeting about um, two parking areas that the Travari neighborhood, and I'm going to get the other name wrong, um, but they decided to go ahead and do a temporary parking permit program for the one community that has a serious parking issue. Um, there were a lot of people in attendance, and so that'll be a pilot, I guess, to see for one year uh, how that goes, and then they'll reevaluate after that point. That was one of the primary actions they took. Of course, Mark Armstrong was sworn in as our new city council member. He actually has a relationship to the department in that he volunteers at Forest Home Farm. Um, he went to docent training and he's helping in the organic garden. Um, so that's kind of a, just an extra little note. So we'll get to know him um, as, the, as the year goes on. And I think uh, there were a few other items, you know, um, Eva Howard, it, who is our Eva Phelps, sorry, um, who was our admin services director retired, but she is going to come back on as a new attendant and help out until a new admin services director is hired. So that's a, a piece of the information. Could you explain, do you know where that, I'm trying to think where that one place is that they have so much trouble with the parking? What, where in the city? It, it was uh, Trevari and uh, you know what, I'm afraid I can't come well, up with the exact location. Um, you could go to the city council packet because there's maps in there that will completely show you. Completely show us, yeah, okay. All right, thank you, Kathy. Um, committee reports, um, I'll start at the top that I can see is uh, Mr. Ehrenbaum. So um, we had the open space committee meeting on Monday. Uh, we had two main items that we covered, which were the spring and summer open space advisory um, hikes. Um, so uh, we're, we're thinking positive. So um, we've, we're, we've, we're scheduling four hikes. Uh, the first hike would begin, would be in, on May 22nd. 
Um, then we'll have a hike on June 12th, another <laughs> one on July 10th, and the final one will be on August 7th. Uh, and they will all be led by a member of the Open Space Committee, and there will be somebody from the staff attending. Um, Kathy is going to have it put into the um, guide and, uh, you know, with all the appropriate um, uh, safeguards of, you know, hopefully we'll be able to do it, but if we can't, then we can't. Uh, uh, but we're hoping that we can get people out and uh, enjoying our beautiful uh, open space. So um, uh, that was one item. And then the second item we had was actually a, a wonderful presentation uh, by one of our uh, uh, committee members, Bob Peoples. Um, he gave a he gave a talk on the tools of open space protection, and he actually took us through all of the different ways that communities protect open space, and the def, you know the definitions of them and uh, the pluses and minuses of them. Um, I thought Kathy, I thought he did just did a fabulous job. Um, you know. Um, it, it might be something that we might ask him to do uh, for the whole Parks Commission, because I think, you know, we, we need to understand how, how open spaces are protected and, and the differences between them, between a GAD and, a, you know, uh, an easement and all of those different things as, as we start talking about um, how we incorporate open space more into you know, into the overall parks and, 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 you know, community service function. Actually, great idea. We can definitely look at that when we have an agenda where we've got a little extra, a little extra space. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he does a fabulous job. He is exceptionally knowledgeable. Um, and it was, it was probably one of the better presentations. Good. I have a question for you. Are all these hikes, how long are they? I mean, how, I mean, are they hard or? Well, the, 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 first, the first one is probably going to be the hardest. It's going to be four and a half to, to five miles. And it's actually going to be up on the Doherty Ridge. Um, but the other three hikes are all going to be about two and a half miles. Um, uh, they, I think the, uh, the last one on August 7th is actually going to be pretty much on, on paved um, walkways. So, um, the, the, you know, they'll, they'll, the, the last three will be relatively easy. The first one's going to be the most challenging one, but it'll also probably be one of the most pretty ones. Right, yeah. Because you'll, you'll be, you know, it, it'll all be all the green, green spring colors and things like that. So hopefully we'll be able to do it. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Commissioner Oslin. <coughs> I serve on the team council and I'd like to reserve uh, my feedback and um, have student commissioner Ramesh share when it's her turn to get the report. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Roberts. Yeah, so I serve on the, um, uh, <laughs> the uh, economic advisory. No, I'm sorry. I, I'm on senior, the, um, senior the advisor. Senior, sorry, sorry. It was like I'm having a senior moment. I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I, I'm I serve on the senior advisory uh, committee, and uh, we were actually uh, canceled for January and reconvene um, on February fourth, I believe. Okay. Thank you, uh, Student Commissioner Ramesh. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so at the December meeting, we approved our ambassadors for the school year, and uh, they actually had their first meeting last week. Um, this year, our ambassadors are focused on providing the workshops that we usually give out to youth conferences, like She's All That, Youth to Youth, and potentially even expanding to scout groups and other youth organizations. So um, these workshops are just um, targeted towards middle school age students to prepare them to just be better leaders and more engaged students when they get to high school. Um, it's focused on building leadership skills and such. Um, and we also approved a partnership with A Brighter Day, which is the organization that um, 
called the Rock Band Showcase for the past two years in San Ramon um, to target and fundraise for uh, teen mental, mental health. So this year, it's not going to be in person, of course, um, but uh, it is moved onto an online platform and there's a way for students and youth to submit videos online and I think will be published on a YouTube page and the public can view it. So that's something to keep your eye out for. Hey, thank you. Sounds interesting. Commissioner Dorlick. Uh, yes, the Arts Advisory Committee meeting, uh, the last meeting focused on the uh, uh, year in review report, which was received this evening and then continued the work with the library public art project. Uh, some of the art submissions came in and so there was extensive review and discussion on the uh, artists, their qualifications uh, and a narrowing down of um, those that they would pursue an interview with. So the library art project is uh, moving forward quite, uh, quite readily and we should be seeing some more activity on that at the next meeting. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, I, <clears throat> today was the um, economic development. Um, basically, they had the um, Townsend Public Affairs, that is the um, company that was, help, was uh, doing, helping the um, small businesses get loans and grants and et cetera. So they had an extensive uh, uh, program and uh, telling what they did. Uh, they've helped uh, $3.1 million. They've helped small businesses um, and they've helped about 49 businesses, I think they said. And then with this new release of money, then <clears throat> they wanna do some more outreach so that they can help more businesses. And so there was extensive um, discussion and questions on that, on that matter, but they are, um, sponsored by the city and they just wanna be sure that anyone who needs help or just even ask questions can contact them and there's no fee involved whatsoever or they're not gonna come back and try to sell you something. So they were hot. They were quite adamant about that. The other one was the planning commission and I'm sure that you've all heard what that was about. Um, <clears throat> that was quite interesting. Uh, in the marketplace, the uh, owner has um, that came to the planning just to get feedback. This is not definite or whatever, but what they would want to do is they would want to develop the southern portion of, of the marketplace, which would entail Starbucks, um, Knob Hill, the, um, oh, I think the little um, education toy store, the pharmacy and the barbershop there. And um, that would be, that's where the, it would be five stories and to approximately um, 280 some units that would be built on that south side and also a parking structure. So um, there was a lot of uh, feedback that a lot of write-ins for opposing the, the project. And so the planning commission did go through things and gave suggestions and all, but that will be to see whether they come back and put in an application or not. So there was, that was a very extensive, a very, uh, I guess, emotional meeting because that's probably the only, mainly that that was the only grocery store in that area. So they really objected to that. And I thought the people that, that spoke and there were over 200, what was it? 276 uh, write-ins. They did not read them all. <laughs> and they kind of, there was only two people that uh, were, opposed, uh, were for the project. The rest were all against the project. So that would be the issue of the planning commission. So it will be interesting. Any other comments? that you have that you want to bring forward? I would just remind all of us what Kathy talked about as far as what's coming in front of the city council yes. uh, about Crow Canyon Gardens. Um, I, I, I would highly recommend all of us, if we were available to listen in to Kathy's presentation and be as supportive as we can. 
I think that would be very, I think that we should be, you know, all there if, if we can to show our support that we, what we have presented. I will definitely keep you apprised if it is for sure on that agenda. So I'll know better tomorrow. Okay. We, we, this commission is <laughs> two and a half years into this discussion. And I, I really want to make sure that the city council values our hard work. Well, I will be speaking on behalf of the commission. So um, I was thinking it was going to be at this meeting last time. So I have my little um, talk already written. Great. <laughs> I'll go back and, and review it. But one of the comments is I want them to know that we didn't take this lightly and that we've listened to the community and all. So yeah, we're a little we're a little bit off topic here. So I'm gonna try yeah. and yeah. Yeah. This part of the conversation, but also um, I do need to say that um, in general, in just a quick consult with the city attorney, that uh, public comment from the commission is probably not appropriate. I know I didn't get a chance to tell you that, uh, Chair Lopez Lucy, just mostly due to perception with the Brown Act issue. Um, so we could talk about it offline, but I just wanted to make sure you knew that. I think you should definitely all be in attendance um, but we should think carefully about public comment. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Okay, and if we no, have no um, commission member items, then I will go and number 13 is adjournment. So if the meeting now is adjourned. Thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Good night.